Hi everyone, welcome back to Ways of the World, a brief global history with sources. As we continue our study of the worlds of Islam, Afro-Eurasian connections. And today our focus will be on Islam and cultural encounter, a four-way comparison. So let's start with the case of India. Now Turkic speaking invaders brought Islam to India and there is the establishment of Turkic and Muslim regi regimes in India beginning circa 1000. At first, violent destruction uh, was done to Hindu and Buddhist temples, and the Sultanate of Delhi, founded in 1206, became more systematic. And then there's the emergence of Muslim communities in India. Buddhists and now low-caste Hindus found Islam attractive. Newly agrarian people also liked Islam. Subjects of Muslim rulers converted to lighten the tax burden. Sufis fit the mold of Indian holy men, um, and that encouraged conversion. Uh, and at its height, 20 to 25 percent of the Indian population had converted from Hinduism to Islam. Now, there's also the difference between monotheism and polytheism. Uh, monotheism, the belief in one God, and polytheism, the belief in many gods. Uh, equality of believers versus the caste system. Right, uh, The um, caste system has a rigid social hierarchy within India as supported by Hinduism, but yet in uh, Islam there's an equality uh, amongst believers. And then sexual modesty versus the open eroticism. Now interaction of Hindus and Muslims is also important to note. Many Hindus served Muslim rulers. Uh, mystics blurred that line between the two religions. And Sikhism developed in the early 16th century. It's a syncretic religion with elements of both Islam and Hinduism. And Muslims remained a distinctive minority in India. All right, so let's look at uh, the growing world of Islam, 900 to 1500. Oh, there we go. Uh, Islam as a religion, a civilization, and an arena of commerce continued to grow even as the Arab empire fragmented. So where did Ibn Battuta's travel ta travels take him outside the worlds of, in of Islam? And you could see that marked with the red arrows. Ibn Battuta largely stayed within the Islamic world of the 14th century, though he also visited the non-Islamic regions of China, India, Sardinia, and areas of Africa outside Muslim control along the Niger River. Between 900 and 1500, Islam primarily spread along the silk, sea, and sand roads. To what extent does the map support that statement? This map largely supports that assertion, but also shows that Islam expanded farther north than the Silk Road, deeper into modern-day Russia, while not being able to penetrate into China, which was along the Silk Road. All right, the Sultanate of Delhi. Between 1206 and 1526, a number of Muslim dynasties ruled northern India as the Delhi Sultanate, while an explicitly Hindu kingdom arose in the south after 1340. It drew on North Indian Muslim architectural features and made use of Muslim mercenaries for its military forces. What geographic features of India kept the Delhi Sultanate from uniting the entire subcontinent? Well, the map shows that geographically, the Islamic Delhi Sultanate had difficulty crossing the Deccan Plateau. All right, the Ottoman Empire by the mid-15th century. As Turkic-speaking migrants bearing the religion of Islam penetrated Anatolia, the Ottoman Empire took shape, reaching into southeastern Europe and finally displacing the Christian Byzantine Empire. Subsequently, it became... Or excuse me, it came to control much of the Middle East and North Africa as well. So based on this map, why was securing Constantinople so important for the Ottoman Turks? Well, Constantinople linked Asia with Europe and controlled access to the Black Sea, making it both economically and politically important. In what ways was Anatolia changed by its incorporation into the Islamic world? A vast majority of the population converted to Islam from Christianity. Turkish conquerors also brought cultural transformation. The Turkish language predominated. Some Sufi religious practices derived from Central Asian Turkic shamanism took root. 
and Turkic traditions of a freer, more gender equal life for women persist persisted. All right, let's focus on the case of Anatolia. Turks invaded Anatolia about the same time as India. There's major destruc destruction at early stages in both places. And Sufi missionaries were important in both as well. But in Anatolia, by 1500, 90% of the population was Muslim and most spoke Turkish. Now, there are reasons for the different results in the two regions. Anatolia had a much smaller population, 8 million versus the 48 million of India. Far more Turkic speakers settled in Anatolia, and there's a much deeper destruction of the Byzantine society in Anatolia. There's active discrimination against Christians, and India's decentralized politics and religion could absorb the shock of invasion better. Now, Turkish rulers of Anatolia welcomed converts. Fewer social barriers uh, were established for those that converted. And the Sufis replaced Christian institutions in Anatolia. And by 1500, the Ottoman Empire was the most powerful Islamic state. Now, the Turks of Anatolia retained much of their culture after conversion. Now let's look at West Africa. Islam came peacefully with traders, not by conquest. And acceptance was mostly voluntary, but without incentives. In West Africa, Islam spread mostly in urban centers, provided links to Muslim trading partners, and it provided literate officials administration assistance and religious legitimacy to the state. And by the 16th, excuse me, the 16th century, several West African cities were Islamic centers. Uh, Timbuktu had over 150 Quranic schools and several centers of higher education. Libraries had tens of thousands of books. Uh, rulers subsidized building of major mosques. And Arabic became a language of religion, education, administration, and trade. And it was a large part of everyday life. And there's no significant spread into the countryside until the 19th century. No thorough religious transformation occurred, and rulers did not impose Islam on their subjects. They did not have a significant Arab immigration either. Okay, West Africa and the world of Islam. So both Trans-Saharan commerce and Islam linked the civilization of West Africa to the larger Muslim world. So let's get, if you can, compare these trade routes to the routes shown on map 9-3 which was the Growing Worlds of Islam, 1900, or excuse me, 900 to 1500. So we're looking at this map and this one. Okay. All right, now that you've had a chance to look, com let's compare the trade routes on both. What are similar, or what are some of the similar effects of these varying trade routes? Well, both maps depict how Islam spread throughout West Africa and along Africa's eastern shore via the existing trade routes of the sand and sea roads. The Great Mosque at Jenne. This mosque in the city of Jenne, initially constructed in the 13th century, illustrates the assimilation of Islam into West African civilization. So explain how this mosque in West Africa is an example of cultural diffusion. Well, the mosque exemplifies traditional pre-Islamic West African architectural forms, but serves as a house of worship for an imported faith, Islam. All right, and lastly, the case of Spain. Uh, Arab and Berber forces conquered most of Spain, called Al-Andalus by Muslims in the early 8th century. Islam did not overwhelm Christianity there. There's a high degree of interaction between Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Some Christians converted to Islam. Uh, Christian Mozarabs adopted the Arabic culture, but not religion. And religious toleration started breaking down by the late 10th century. And it led to increasing war with Christians, uh, with the Christian states of northern Spain. And there's a pure a more puritanical forms of Islam that entered Spain from North Africa. And in Muslim-ruled regions, increasing limitations placed on Christians. Uh, for example, 200,000 Jews were also expelled. 
and many Muslims are forced out of Christian conquered regions or kept from public practice of their faith. And then there's the completion of the Christian reconquest in 1492, known as the Reconquista. And that concludes our study of Islam and cultural encounter, a four-way comparison. I will see you guys next time.